Okay, to see what exactly a body plot is telling us, let's go to uh, MATLAB and run the arrow controls toolbox and then define the transfer function. Um, very slow actuator with a time constant of uh, 0.01, like so. And then we will plot the asymptotic body plot. of G. So, if I were to look at this plot, now again the transfer function that we've used for the system, our transfer function is equal to 0 0.01 over S plus 0 0.01. So we know that if we let S go to zero, a steady state step will respond, will have a final value of 1, if the input is 1. And this circular dot right there is the break frequency, which is 0.01. That's radians per second. That break frequency of 0.001 or 0 0.01 radians per second is shown over here as the break frequency, S plus omega sub B, 0.01. 1 radians per second. So the Bode plot starts out at 0 dB all the way out to the break frequency of 0 0.01 radians per second and then the high frequency part past 0 0.01 radians per second will decay at minus 20 dB per decade. That's the Bode plot. And we know that right here that would be 3 dB attenuation from the asymptotic Bode plot if I wanted the true curve. The true curve. The angle criterion, these numbers over here at the angle, these circle dots over here, tell you how to draw the angle. So we start at one tenth the break frequency. So we know that our break frequency is equal to 0 0.01 radians per second. And one tenth of that would be 0 0.01 O1, or 10 to the minus 3, and that's where our angle deviates from 0 degrees, which is the angle of a uh, real number 1. The angle of real number 1 is 0, and it goes to minus 90 degrees. And it goes to minus 90 degrees at 10 times the break frequency. And it starts at 0 0.1 times the break frequency. At the break frequency right here, we have 45 degrees. So that's what the Bode plot is telling us about the actuator transfer function. Now what does it mean? Well, it means if I put an input here of sine omega t, where omega is 0 0.01, so I have sine 0.01, times t, that says that the output would be equal to 3 dB less than that. So the output is going to be, and 3 dB less than that is a 1 over the square root of 2, so it's going to be 0 0.707 times the output of the input, because that's what the 3 dB means. The angle of the output is going to be 45 degrees lagging the input. So we'll have a lag, what's called a phase lag of 45 degrees. Now let's take a look and see exactly what this means. So if I were to go and see exactly what this means, here is uh, here is the input. So that's my uh, input at if at the frequency of uh, 0 0.01. So this is going to be uh, the sine of 0 0.01 times t. Now we know that when t equals 628, that this will be 6.28. That's 2 pi. So at 628 or so, right here, this thing's going to hit 0 again. So that's going to be 1 from 0 to 628 seconds will be one cycle of the input, which I'm drawing right here. That's the input one cycle. 
of the input. Okay? Now the output is going to be 0 0.707. So this output over here is going to be 3 dBs less than the input. So that magnitude of 3 dB is shown by being 0 0.707 of the input. And we can see that that's going to occur right here. If we see the peak over here, is going to be 0 0.707 or 0 0.7. We'll just use a 0 0.7. That's going to be the height of the output. So that gives us a 3 dB. Now the phase of 45 degrees will turn out to be sine omega t minus 45 degrees. This is the output, right? Sine of omega degrees, and it's going to be 0 0.707. Or, again, 20 log of 1 over the square root of 2 is going to be 3 dB, and the phase angle is minus 45 degrees. So that's a quarter cycle, and we can see over here that if we shift the input curve 45 degrees, so if we shift the input 45 degrees, so this would be one-eighth of a cycle, I believe. Yeah, one-eighth of a cycle. Then we'd end up with the output curve, and again, it would be 3 dB down from the input, minus 3 dB, and it would be 45 degrees out of phase. 45 degrees out of phase. And if it were 90 degrees out of phase, then the curve would be here. And if it was 180 degrees out of phase, then the output would be exactly out of phase with the input. Exactly out of phase. And that's a key point. When, when, when the output is minus 180 degrees out of phase, right, that's when we have to have less than, we have to have what's called gain margin here. And gain margin is defined by how far below in absolute magnitude the output is from the, from the input. So if, this isn't the case here, but if this was 180 degrees out of phase, then this 3 dB from the output to the input would mean I had a positive 3 dB gain margin. I would have a gain margin of 3 dB. We'll cover the phase margin uh, later, but this will illustrate the gain margin. So this system would have a positive gain margin if it was out of phase and you still had 3 dB to go from the output to the input. And that would mean that the system would be stable if you closed the loop on it. Now, if you understand this, go to one-tenth the break frequency at point zero zero one or ten to the minus three radians per second and repeat drawing the input and the output sinusoids and then go to ten times the break frequency or point one radians per second and do the same thing draw the input and the output turn those in with your next readiness check and I'll give you an extra five points if they are correct again your break frequency is ten to the minus two or point oh one radians per second and repeat what I did for the sinusoids at one-tenth and ten times that number to see if you understand what this is about. Uh, thank you.